Hi, and welcome to the New York Hall of Science STEM Careers Expo. I'm here with Keith Comito, who is a mathematician, computer scientist, and president of the Life Extension Advocacy Foundation. Keith, what is Lifespan.io? Uh, Lifespan.io is a crowdfunding platform that our nonprofit, LEAF for short, founded to basically help engage uh, the public in helping to fund and raise awareness for research aimed at extending healthy human lifespan. Now, what advice would you have for anyone who's interested in pursuing a career in STEM? Basically, uh, be curious and don't limit yourself. There are so many opportunities. STEM is such a wide net uh, that whatever you're curious about, whatever your hobby is, there probably is a related career in STEM that you can find. Uh, so don't feel like you have to be pigeonholed into one of five jobs that everyone says you need to have. It's certainly not the way my career went. <laughs> well, you've been a computer scientist and a mathematician and a president of a business or an organization, and you also advocate for life extension technology, so many different roles. What would you say was the thing that influenced you to start Lifespan.io? Sure. So I guess I've always been philosophically interested in aging and, and why certain diseases like Alzheimer's and heart disease and cancer aren't really considered as addressable in the same way as, you know, an infectious disease or something like that. And, you know, growing, uh, society is growing grayer. They call it the gray tsunami in Japan. And it's basically a big issue that it's not being looked at enough. So I, I thought that, you know, someone with my background and, and curiosity in this space could uh, make an impact. And, and I'd like to say that we have so far. So. What do you think is the biggest advancement that you know of in recent times in life extension? Uh, sure, I'll answer this two ways. One is actually kind of a conceptual change, is that up until maybe about 10 years ago, aging wasn't seen as something that could be addressed. It was uh, an inevitability, the biological clock, etc. But over the past 10 years, uh, and really coalescing now in the last couple of years, there's a growing, growing consensus of sort of a framework of what are the things that go wrong. And you can sort of address this like you would a car, you know, maintaining certain things that go wrong, uh, remediating certain types of damages. So that's conceptually uh, a big deal, actually. And then as far as like specific research, I'll, there's many, but I'll come up with one. It's this class of drugs called senolytics, which is basically, um, there are these type of cells that build up in the body called senescent cells. You can think of them like zombies. Uh, they don't, they're not cancer. They don't grow out of control. They actually don't divide at all, but they really don't do anything. And they, they just kind of hang around, create a burden on you, and they kind of infect nearby cells and turn them into these zombies. So as you get older and older, you accumulate this burden of zombies. And there are these new classes of drugs that basically tell those zombies to, uh, to kill themselves, <laughs> basically. To die. Yeah. Killing the zombies that are burdening our bodies. That's amazing. Now, for any young students that are out there thinking about, I really want to solve aging and help get in, and get involved in life extension, help people live hopefully forever, how can young people become life extension advocates? Sure. I mean, one way to get involved is obviously doing the research itself, but on the advocacy part, there is a lot of work to be done in the soft sciences space, in communication. So one of the major issues that, that we're doing is basically, uh, to give you an example, the World Health Organization puts out this program of work every couple of years. And in their most recent program, they didn't mention uh, anything about you know healthy, quote unquote, aging or assisting the elderly. So we lobbied, we got a bunch of people from Facebook or whatever to, to, to message them and they changed their policy. So even just communication, being good at Facebook or YouTube, these things can have powerful real world effects. So you don't have to be a hard scientist to help out in this issue or, or any issue really. You can be an advocate no matter who you are or what age you are. Well, thank you so much for coming along to the New York Hall of Sciences STEM Careers Expo. If people want to check out your work, where can they find you? Sure, just go to lifespan.io, nice and easy, lifespan.io slash blog if you want to read about it. And a lot of great content, get involved, learn about it. Thanks for joining us, Keith.